So, Borderlands 3 has officially been announced, and on one hand, I think a lot of fans of the series seem to be pretty pleased with what they've seen in the footage shown so far. But on the other hand, there's a sizable PC crowd that's pretty upset about the Epic Store exclusivity deal. You can definitely tell Gearbox held off on confirming their exclusivity deal with Epic during their PAX 2019 presentation because they anticipated the backlash and wanted to mitigate potential live negative reactions caught on camera. They waited until a few days later on April 3rd, 2019, after the presentation and after they were behind cover to make the announcement. While this is something that a lot of us saw coming, based on tweets Randy Pitchford posted a while back expressing his adamant support for the platform and based on accidental leaks of marketing material for the game featuring the Epic Store logo, some folks still held out hope that the game would be released on both Epic and Steam, though we obviously know now that didn't pan out and reactions have been about what you'd expect. There is the crowd that doesn't really care all that much about PC launchers and are simply happy to celebrate the existence of a long-awaited mainline sequel to the highly regarded Borderland series, while others have expressed their disdain towards Gearbox 2K and Take-Two higher-ups' decision to sign this six months long exclusivity deal, especially given the long-standing history that the Borderland series has with Steam and its users. Unsurprisingly, one way disgruntled gamers have decided to express their dissent to all of this is by taking to Steam to review bomb past entries in the series. One gander at the Steam pages of games like the original Borderlands, Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and the numerous Borderlands DLCs will reveal that, since the Epic Store exclusivity announcement, they've all been flooded by a wave of negative reviews that's tarnished their overall standing, many of which look like this. Tactics of this nature are nothing new. You may recall that something similar happened with Metro Exodus. Now, for my part, I'm not a big fan of review bombing games that have little to do with current events. Regardless of the controversy surrounding Borderlands 3, titles like Borderlands 1 and 2 are still fantastic games that are still being sold on Steam, so I don't find it ideal to lash out against them. At the same time, I do get that gamers have a desire to find ways to express their sentiments loudly and clearly give even that feedback often seems to go ignored by game companies in this day and age. Game publishers and developers have a tendency to remain complacent about certain practices until communities make a disruptive ruckus, and some gamers have found that review bombing does at the very least have a way of turning some heads. We've already seen a number of headlines regarding games of the Borderlands series getting review bombed on Steam, which goes to show that stuff like this does at the very least make noise, which is exactly what crowds display with Epic's antics want. I still don't think it's right to go after old installments, but then again, because the Epic Game Store doesn't have features like user reviews, forums, and community features where fans can express themselves, share their feedback, and speak out, it's hardly surprising that they'll find other avenues to do so. Granted, even if Epic Game Store had the same community features as Steam, where Borderlands 3 enthusiasts could leave feedback, we would probably still see past Borderlands games getting review bombs which is unfortunate. Now, Randy Pitchford, head of Gearbox, has caught wind of the recent review bombings, and he took to Twitter to express his thoughts on the matter, stating, quote, Ironically, that this misuse is possible, and that Steam has no interest in correcting this misuse, makes me kind of happy about 2K's decision, and makes me want to reconsider Gearbox Publishing's current posture on the platform. Now, what Randy Pitchford failed to mention is that Steam has actually taken steps towards mitigating review bombs. For those who aren't aware, back in March 15th, 2019, Steam announced an update for how they would be handling user reviews henceforth. The company expressed how they want to find a good balance where developers can feel like reviews towards their games are fair, while at the same time, consumers feel like they can still voice their opinions and find reviews that are accurate and trustworthy. To that end, Valve implemented Implemented what they call off-topic reviews, which the company described as follows. First, what do we mean by an off-topic review bomb? As we defined back in our original post, a review bomb is where players post a large number of reviews in a short period of time, aimed at lowering the review score of a game. We define an off-topic review bomb as one where the focus of those reviews is on a topic that we consider unrelated to the likelihood that future purchasers will be happy if they buy the game, and hence not something that should be added to the review score. Obviously, there's a gray area here, because there's a wide range of things that players care about. So 
how will we identify these off-topic review bombs? The first step is a tool we have built that identifies any anomalous review activity on all games on Steam in as close to real time as possible. It doesn't know why a given game is receiving anomalous review activity, and it doesn't even try to figure that out. Instead, it notifies a team of people at Valve who will then go and investigate. We have already run our tool across the entire history of reviews on Steam, identifying many reasons why games have seen periods of anomalous review activity, and off-topic review bombs appear to only be a small number of them. Once our team has identified that the anomalous activity is an off-topic review bomb, we'll mark the time period it encompasses and notify the developer. The reviews within that time period will then be removed from the review score calculation. As before, the reviews themselves are left untouched. If you want to dig into them to see if they're relevant to you, you'll still be able to do so. To help you do that, we have made it clear when you're looking at a store page where we've removed some reviews by default, and we have further improved the UI around anomalous review periods. The post then proceeded to show an image of what off-topic reviews will look like when implemented before concluding with this. Finally, we have also enabled you to opt out of this entirely. If that's your preference, there is now a checkbox in your Steam store options where you can choose to have off-topic review bombs still included in all the review scores you see. Now, ever since this new system was announced and implemented a few weeks ago, there has been some skepticism from users, in large part because nobody had seen it in action, but that all changes with the Borderlands review bombs. If you go to any one of the review bombed Borderlands listings right now, you'll see that a segment of recent reviews have been labeled white. These reviews haven't disappeared from the face of the planet, they are still there, anyone can still explore this period of anomaly by clicking on any sections of the graph to filter positive or negative reviews within this whited out time frame. But by default, these will not count towards the game's overall review score calculations or be prominently displayed. This is all detailed if you click on the asterisk symbol here, which opens the following pop-up message stating that the time range from April 3rd to April 7th, 2019 have been marked as containing an abnormal set of reviews that are unrelated to one's enjoyment of this particular product, and in turn are excluded from the review score by default, though users who want to dig deeper can still read the reviews and edit preferences to include off-topic review periods in review scores. Indeed, if you log into Steam, you can click on the Edit Preferences button and select an option that will make it so that reviews marked as off-topic do count towards the score on your end. For example, you can see here how changing my preferences adjusts the overall review score for Borderlands 2 from overwhelmingly positive to very positive, and recent reviews from very positive to mixed. All in all, I'd say this is actually a pretty decent solution on Steam's part. They aren't censoring or deleting reviews, the stuff labeled off-topic isn't being made inaccessible, and users are given the option of adjusting their settings to their liking, while at the same time, this does mitigate a game score suffering over reviews that have nothing to do with the product's actual merits. I would say this strikes a good balance of helping developers without outright disabling users' ability to leave the feedback they want. Interestingly, all of this Randy Pitchford omits to mention or acknowledge, and he uses Steam's supposed lack of action on this front as an excuse to reconsider Gearbox Publishing's current posture on Steam, suggesting he might partake in signing more exclusivity deals with Epic. You know, I kinda have to question whether it really was up to publisher 2K and Take-Two to sign an Epic Store exclusivity for Borderlands 3, whether Randy Pitchford really had no part to play in that. Randy made the insinuation that the exclusivity deal was out of his hands in a string of preemptive tweets published on April 1st in response to the accidental leaks suggesting Borderlands 3 would be Epic Store exclusive. In this string of tweets, he stated that 2K and Take-Two have exclusive publishing rights for Borderlands 3, and that they make all decisions regarding price points, territories, distribution, and platform partnerships. But every step of the way, he's shown that he's not particularly against this epic exclusivity trend, and that he's more than happy to go along with 2K and Take-Two's recent distribution decisions. It all raises suspicions, or gives off the perception, that Randy is being complacent to all this for his own benefit, while trying to come off like an innocent victim of publisher shenanigans. 
Regardless of Randy's intentions, what I do know is that it's time for Valve to fight back. The new user review system is a step in the right direction, but the one major thing Epic has going for it right now is their developer-friendly revenue share, and if Steam can match or surpass Epic on that front, publishers and developers will have a much harder time justifying going Epic exclusive. While there is plenty to be said about the Epic Games Store and its anti-consumer methods, I cannot deny that it's rather frustrating that Valve has been so slow to respond. It isn't rocket science. Game companies will release their games on the platform with the potential to make them the most money, and with Epic's 88% cut versus Steam's performance-based 70-80%. to In addition to the cash infusion Epic is providing from their massive war chest, it is a no-brainer for some developers. It is, however, much more difficult to sympathize with companies that already stand to rake in a boatload of money regardless of which platforms they release their upcoming games on. As I said before, I can understand why indie developers who are self-published or backed by a small publisher might go with Epic Games Store and take an exclusivity deal. Not only can indie games released on Epic Games Store gain more visibility due to the lack of bloatware clutter plaguing Steam, the cash infusion from Epic and the higher cut could be vital to that indie studio's future and survival. A publisher like Take-Two and its subsidiary 2K, a developer like Gearbox, and a franchise like Borderlands, on the other hand, are certainly not strapped for money or visibility. Take-Two is already raking in cash by the boatloads with games like GTA Online and Red Dead Redemption 2, among many others. Borderlands 3 will be well-recognized, sell gangbusters, and make a lot of money even if it's released on both Epic Games Store and Steam. And beyond being lured by cash infusion that may bolster corporate financial guidance, I'm struggling to think of a tangible justification for making a game like Borderlands 3 exclusive. What's particularly egregious about Take-Two's participation in all this is that it wasn't long ago that CEO Strauss Zelnick expressed support for his company's games being released to as many platforms as possible. During an earnings call from back in February 2019, he said this, Our approach is to be wherever the consumer is, and we distribute very widely. Generally speaking, we have not been a believer in exclusive relationships, and I wouldn't comment on any particular store. The question's been raised, shouldn't you as a company be exclusively direct to consumer? I think our experience is that consumers want to shop where they can get a multiplicity of titles. Our strategy is to be broadly distributed. We are happy that Epic's going into the business, we are happy to have someone else at the table. We have not been a believer in exclusive relationships, he said. Bullshit! In the last few weeks, take two assignments their private division publishing label away to Epic, which is why both Outer Worlds and Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey are coming exclusively to the Epic Game Store, and more recently their other publishing label, 2K, has signed Borderlands 3 away to Epic. Not being a believer in exclusive relationships, my ass. One last thing I'd like to highlight is this Reddit post that I think encapsulates much of what Borderlands fans frustrated by the Epic Store exclusivity are feeling. In response to Randy's sentiments that he's happy about 2K's decision to sign Borderlands 3 as an Epic exclusive due to past Borderlands installments getting review bombed and Steam not correcting user reviews being misused despite Valve recently having done just that, the user had this to say, like 10 plus millions people own Borderlands 2 alone on Steam. It's literally like among the top 10 most sold games on it. Now because some of those people are pissed, he's engaging in some borderline revisionistic bullshit. Maybe if your company didn't put their greed for money above the interest of your actual customers, people wouldn't protest in the only way that actually gets a reaction out of you. I'm sure they would prefer to actually leave you a message on the Epic Game Store, but you know, that's just another consumer-friendly feature missing from it. Added to the pile, I guess. There is no universe in which Borderlands 3 wouldn't have been a massive financial success, but you just couldn't pass a little bit of extra bribe money, even if it meant fucking potentially millions of your fans. Borderlands 3 was going to print money one way or another. The only people capable of hurting its success at this point are you CEO shits. If you seriously thought this whole thing would go over smoothly, then I can't put into words how out of touch with reality you must be. The user then highlighted what Strauss Zelnick said in the past about being against exclusivity before stating, quote, a company that will lie straight to your face, no actual spine or ethics, across all leadership positions. Cry me a fucking river, Randy. 
One important point that this user raises is that people protest so aggressively because they feel like it's the only way they'll actually get a reaction out of these game companies. They feel their feedback will go ignored otherwise. Case in point, it wasn't until a mass protest against Battlefront 2's loot boxes that EA finally decided to backpedal on their monetization tactics. And many will agree that nothing short of a vocal dissent of that scale would have rocked that boat. It's only when consumers take more drastic measures to express their disdain that companies actually seem to lend an ear. I'm not saying it's right that past Borderlands installments are getting review bombed, but when consumers feel constantly lied to, when they feel like calmly and respectfully presenting feedback consistently falls on deaf ears and never seems to elicit any kind of response, I get why stuff like this happens. It's not ideal, but this is the landscape that the gaming industry has created for itself with its lack of transparency and with its money-chasing anti-consumer tactics. And look, I get it, game companies are business, of course they'll go with what's most profitable, of course they'll make a deal with Epic if they foresee greater short-term profits, but a respectable company will find a balance between what's profitable and what's consumer-friendly. They'll draw certain lines to make enough money to grow and sustain themselves while valuing their loyal customers. The fact of the matter is that Borderlands 3 would have done very well shipping on both Epic and Steam. Take 2, 2K and Gearbox would have all been perfectly fine and consumers would have been very happy. It would have been a win-win scenario, a perfect balance of being both business smart and consumer friendly. The epic exclusivity deal for Borderlands 3 wasn't an act of desperation. It wasn't something they needed to do to survive or thrive. It was a lucrative bribe that was accepted at the cost of consumer choice. And while the level of umbrage people take with this whole ordeal will vary from person to person, there is no denying that there's a sizable PC crowd who feel this missed that don't find present circumstances justifiable, and they'll lash out the only way they feel they can, the only way they feel will actually make some kind of ripple and yield some kind of reaction. Will the current backlash from fans be enough to disrupt Borderlands 3 to an extent that will force Take-Two, 2K, and Gearbox's hands? I suppose only time will tell, but I personally don't think so. I think Borderlands 3 is highly anticipated and high-profile enough that most people will ultimately be willing willing to overlook the inconveniences that the Epic Store exclusivity might bring. Epic knows this too, and like it or not, their aggressive business strategy is working. So it really is now up to Valve to respond in kind by bolstering Steam's revenue cut and cleaning up the store's bloatware. These are one man's take on the situation anyway. I'd love to hear what your take is on the Borderlands series getting review bombed on Steam, Valve's countermeasures, and Randy Pitchford's response in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.